Mm. Excuse me. Just having some breakfast, summer vacation. So anyway, I'm going to present you your first set of notes via the video lesson. So what I want you to do is take out your notebooks, write down today's date, put factors and multiples at the top, and lesson one. As I'm going through this, I want you to write down what you see, I want you to listen carefully, and I want you to learn. Um, if I'm going too quickly, always just press the pause button to write things down. And if you need to rewind, that's the beauty of this magical technology. You can go ahead and see things a couple of times if you need to. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to begin this lesson with some vocabulary. These are the terms that you need to know. You might have learned some of these in fifth grade. Hopefully they're uh, not completely new to you. Let's start with factor. A factor is a number that is being multiplied by another number. Okay, this is just the fancy terminology for this. You see this? That's a multiplication sentence. Each of those numbers has a name. The six and four are factors. 24 is the answer. We call that a product. So a factor is just the number that's being multiplied. No big deal. All right, you got that? Sweet. Okay, next. A common factor is a factor that two or more numbers share. So if we look at the numbers 24 and 72, they both have a common factor of 8 because 8 times 3 gives us 24 and 8 times 9 gives us 72. Okay, so we've got factors and common factors. Easy so far, right? I knew you could do it. So 24 and 72 have a common factor of 8. There are also more common factors that 24 and 72 share. Okay, we're going to talk about many common factors. Well, we're going to want to go and pick the largest one, and that brings us to the next part. The greatest common factor, or GCF. It's the largest common factor that two or more numbers share. So, if we go back to 24 and 72, they have a greatest common factor of 24. Now remember, 8 was a common factor, but not the largest one. 24 is the greatest common factor. 24 equals 24 times 1. 72 equals 24 times 3. Notice that both of those numbers have a factor of 24 in them. Now let's shift gears and talk about multiples for a minute. A multiple is formed by multiplying a given number by the counting numbers. Remember, we start with 1 when we're counting. Okay, so this next thing, when you see my big face pop up like that, that just means I'm giving you a little information on the side. You do not have to write this part in your notebook, okay? It says when you count by fives, you're actually listing the multiples of five. You learned how to do that in kindergarten. So multiples shouldn't really be a new thing. Let's take a look at some multiples of six. Now I do want you to write this down. If we count by sixes, we have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. That goes on forever to infinity and beyond. Okay? So the last term we want to talk about is the least common multiple, or LCM. That's the smallest multiple that two or more numbers share. Now, there are going to be an infinite amount of common multiples. So we really want to pick the very first one the least or smallest one uh, to ground our conversation. Otherwise, they could just go on forever. All right. Let's go back to factors. Finding factors. Let's start at the beginning. So start with one times whatever number you're finding a factor of. Then we're going to try the next number, two, then three, then four, etc. We want to just keep going in order so we don't miss anything. A lot of times kids make the mistake of just writing down the first numbers that come to mind and then they miss some that uh, they hadn't thought of. Okay, if you repeat your factors, then you can cross that out. We don't need them twice, but that's a good clue that we're done. Once you get the same factor again, you're never going to get anything new. It's always going to be just repeated factors after that. Another way to tell if you can stop listing factors is if you get doubles, like 4 times 4. Okay, a double is just a, another repeat, 
So that tells you, hey, I'm done. I can move on with my life. Let's look at an example. Find the factors of 16. We're going to start with 1 times 16. Remember, start with 1. 2 will work because 16 is even. That will be 2 times 8. Now, 3 is interesting. 3 is not going to work. Okay, so I'm writing it down 3 times question mark while we consider it. In the future, you're not going to write that down, but do put that in your notes right now. If I take 16 and divide it by 3, then I get 5 and 1 third, or 5.3333. That's not a whole number. That means 3 is not a factor of 16, because when we talk about factors, we only want whole numbers, not decimals or fractions. So I'm going to cross that out. Don't want it. It's not going to work. And the next one after 3 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Now wait a minute. Did you notice something? I knew you would. That's right. 4 times 4 is a pair of doubles. Doubles means we're done. Now we want to list those in order from least to greatest. So they are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Notice that there are only 5 factors of 16. 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Got it? Easy, right? Well, let's do one more. Let's find the factors of 24. Again, we'll just list them, starting with 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Now, I know for a fact that 5 is not going to work. How do I know? Do you know? 5 only divides into numbers that end with 5 or 0. 24 does not end with 5 or 0, so 5 doesn't work. And instead of writing down a question mark and then crossing it out, we're just going to skip it. We're going to do that editing in our head. Okay, after 5 comes 6. 6 times 4 looks like something we've already seen. So that's a repeat. We can cross it out. That tells us we're done listing factors. Now, if I list them in order, the factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. In this case, we have 8 factors, whereas with the 16, we only had 5 factors. There's always going to be a limited amount of factors, but that number can vary from number uh, problem to problem. Okay, so now we've found the factors of 16, the factors of 24. The next thing I want to talk about is what do they share in common We'll list common factors and then find the greatest common factor of those two numbers. Okay, so let's write this down. Find the greatest common factor, GCF, of 16 and 24. If we list our factors of 16 again, they're 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. And listing our factors of 24 again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. The things we find in both places, I can pull out a 1, I can pull out a 2, a 4, and an 8. So the common factors are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And once we have that list complete, it's a pretty easy step to find the greatest common factor, which is the largest of those numbers, in this case, 8. Got it? GCF. Okay, let's move on to multiples quickly. If we want to find the least common multiple of two numbers, we want to list the multiples, the first few multiples anyway, of those numbers and see what's in common. Okay, Listing the multiples of 6 is like counting by 6's. We did that earlier. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and that goes on forever. Multiples of 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. And so the question is, what do we see in both places? Okay, the first number that I see in both places is the 18. That means the 18 is the least common multiple. I see something else in both places. What is it? Are you talking to your computer right now? That's weird. Anyway, it is 36. Okay, so the least common multiple is 18. The next common multiple is 36, but remember we want the least common multiple. Okay, after 36 we're going to see 54 in both places. Okay, can you see a pattern in the common multiples? Now those common multiples will go on forever. Do you see the pattern? If you're clever, you'll note that the least common multiple is sort of the starting point, and then every other common multiple is a multiple of the LCM. Okay, in other words, 
18 times 2 is 36, 18 times 3 is 54, and so on. Okay, got it? You've got it written all down? Wonderful. It's on to the next thing. The end.